Hey, welcome back, everyone. More Age of Empires here for you. I'm playing as the Abbasid Dynasty here on High View up against my opponent, the True Shy Guy, who's playing as the English. Pretty classic to see another English player on the ladder. Everyone's playing English or French nowadays, mostly English. And I'm, of course, always looking out for that English aggression. We want to watch out for big long bowmen and spearmen masses that then build rams and just knock over my whole base. So I I'm I'm going to go for a two town center opening, but I'm going to delay it a little bit just to make sure that uh, I'm not going to get attacked by just long bowmen streaming to my base. So we're going to still look to get stables, two or three archery ranges, and then a blacksmith to get myself some ranged upgrades. We're going to be looking for uh, barracks, mass longbowmen, and if there's a blacksmith in my opponent's base, that will be a big indicator that they're going to bring rams against me. As for the map high view, it's a lot of stealth forests. Uh, it can be really helpful to get the occasional uh, outpost here out on these big stealth forests, and we'll probably see my English opponent do that. I'm hoping to do a little bit of that myself, or at least keep up the scout production, because scouts actually have decent view, they have de decent vision through these uh, stealth forests. And we actually managed to pick up a few sheep around his base. I think there was actually one down here that I missed, but uh, I decided to make a second scout. Not very typical for my uh, opening, but I really wanted to keep vision of him and again on high view vision is king there's just so many stealth forests you can just slip around undetected so i think i'm queuing up another another scout any moment here but i'm going to get my economic upgrades i'm going to get the wheelbarrow uh, research which will make my villagers move faster and carry more and we're also going to be getting the fresh foodstuffs which will reduce my villager costs and we're pulling nearly all of my villagers off of gold because I'm of course worried about the aggression that my English opponent's going to send out so now we're just getting everyone on wood and we're probably going to build our stables and our archery range before we start to gather stone for our second town center and now I'm getting really uh getting really curious because this is when this is when uh, my opponent's probably going to age up soon we already see the council hall coming down so that's going to be spamming out longbowmen And we're seeing, of course, farms on the back of his base. This is a pretty standard English opener. I suspect he's gotten wheelbarrow on the back of this because it's a pretty slow uh, age two for my opponent. With that in mind, I, I maybe should have um, maybe I should have waited on the archery range. Maybe just made the stables. Uh, it's nice having a horseman out because I can chase away some of his scouts, which have been. Uh, harassing my villagers, but they, I mean, they do like no damage to my villagers, so we can just kind of chase them off. So we're producing archers blindly, just assuming we're going to get um, ram rushed, and we're gathering up stone. Once this stone outcropping drops to like 1200, or actually I might make it 1150, just to um, have a little extra stone to make an arrow emplacement, and we actually saw a spearman there. So he already has a barracks. And this is interesting. He's using wood right now to build walls. And I almost never see that from an English opponent. They always want to spend their wood on more longbowmen, uh, rams. And he's being smart. I think he scouted my stables. And he knows to make a few spearmen to defend his uh, resource points. So he's got some spearmen and a scout around his gold. I'm trying to draw them to the north while sending other horsemen here, but look, he just rotates in more spearmen. So he's doing a really good job defending his base, and we see the blacksmith, and it looks like he actually has siege engineering queued up. I, I can't see what upgrade he's going for when I'm in the game. I can just see that he has a blacksmith. So all I know is, okay, he's getting upgrades and he's probably getting siege engineering. We're putting down our second town center, and this is pretty delayed. Uh, it's okay. I'm all right with the slight delay, but now we need to... Okay, yeah, now we're seeing the longbowman spam come. So that was interesting. He kind of held off on making longbowmen as long as he could, 
and is instead making a bunch of spearmen to chase off my early horsemen. So yeah, there's the barracks, there's the council hall, and there's the siege uh, or the uh, blacksmith giving him siege engineering. So we we know that it's coming. And so I decided to put a forward outpost down. I was looking around on the internet and they said, when I'm an English player and an opponent puts down one of these forward outposts, it's so annoying because it kind of gives away what I'm doing and I have to protect my villagers because if I come within range of this outpost, I'll target fire his villagers. So now he has to build his rams like maybe all the way back here. And we can kind of poke and prod at his units to see if they're gonna come forward. So he's actually building a ram all the way back here. Yep, there it was. It just flashed for a moment there. Yeah, there it is. And as always, when an opponent is coming forward with a sort of ram siege push, I like to send horsemen around to some of these resource points so that he has to give a little bit of attention to these other uh, areas of his base. So I'm gonna put this horseman back here so that when he chops through the wood, he'll have a nasty surprise on the other end. And I'm also going to send this horseman to his gold. That way these villagers will get harassed. So he's going to come forward. I'm probably going to give up the mill, maybe this house. I like that we haven't overchopped over here. And let's look at what we've got going on. He's got a lot of spearmen, just a ton. And it looks like he's going up to three rams and a good ball of uh, longbowmen. So I really can't be making horsemen. I think I took my took my foot off the pedal on the stables so we're not really making as many horsemen as before yeah big queue of archers only one horseman in the queue and i actually hot keyed so i made a control group of these eight villagers that are sitting in my uh town center and i'm gonna put i, I believe they're all gonna pop out on this this front of my uh, this side of my town center and i'll use them to burn down the ram so now I, i'm fighting with them i'm happy to do this in fact my uh plus one attack is about to finish and that'll be really important yes so the archers they're maybe taking shots at my villagers but we're killing all of his spearmen over here oh these villagers are taking a lot of losses i retreat them in looks like i lost maybe two or three but his spearmen are really just evaporating and whenever my villagers get stuck between all of his spearmen i just retreat them back inside you can see they're actually taking some shots at the longbowmen and these spearmen are done we've gotten our two ranged upgrades I need to get my archers off of attacking this uh, battering ram and up onto his longbowmen. Still losing a decent amount of villagers. Looks like we're at 38 with seven idle, but he's backing off. This horseman is doing a ton of damage compared to these archers. I'm gonna send my villagers forward. Okay, good. Now my archers are actually engaging with his longbowmen. I should have targeted down this villager and I realize it too late, but then we target it. So he's got his longbowmen trading with my archers. He's got his ranged upgrades as well. I come forward and we're just gonna battle it out with his archers, but now I realize, wait, 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 wait. He doesn't have rams, he can't do anything here. So I just back my archers off. We'll build a battering ram down here and then we'll just set my villagers back to work. Cause he's not doing anything. He's just gonna be tickling this house or this, these buildings here. Like I don't even have to send these villagers forward yet. Yeah, they're just gonna, loop around ideally i would have had textiles during that fight but we did all right my harassment at his gold was only somewhat effective mostly he just pulled his villagers back it wasn't like a huge massacre like a huge win for me it was pretty much just maybe one or two hits on a villager before he retreated them but the smart thing that i did behind all of this was the moment i got attacked I did send those horsemen out to harass, and I did the other thing that I like to do when I know I'm about to get sieged, which is send my villagers to new resource points. So I actually set a bunch of villagers down here to take out these deer, and we actually sent some villagers up here to these berries as well. So on the back of all of that, I gathered up a lot of food, and I sent some villagers over to this gold vein, and we've actually made it up to the third age. So we're aging up. We're continuing to harass his villagers. And we're gonna try and clear out these towers that he's built near the front of my base. He's going pretty hard on the gold and you can see he's actually down to like 2,600. That's almost what I'm at. So he's likely gonna age up very soon. And I love this scout hanging out right here. I hope he doesn't kill it because 
This gives me great vision of his army and how much gold he's mined. Probably when this gold drops down to like 2300 or probably right about now, he's going to put down his uh, third landmark. So I really would like to get a scout back into this little stealth forest here. My vision has really suffered. Though we did take out um, two of his outposts. That was pretty good. And now we've made it up to the castle age. Uh, looks like my opponent's floating a lot of resources. I think he's about to hit... Yeah, he's got enough food to go up. It looks like he over-collected on wood. So he either needs to pivot to a just like huge farm-based economy or he needs to do like another ram push or spam out a bunch of longbowmen. Because as it is, he has just way too much wood. And it looks like he did spend it making walls, so that's good. And here I am again. I always want to have vision of what my opponent's doing, even if, it's a, even if it's as simple as just sending in one horseman to poke at some of his villagers. I love putting these horsemen behind the uh, wood lines because the moment the villagers chop through, they usually just engage on some, one of these villagers. And yeah, there you go. We actually find an outpost being built. Here comes some spearmen. I decide, let's just run through his base, see what we can find. Looks like a bunch of farmlands back here. Not too surprising. English love to do that. Lovely, lovely. Up front, I'm going to send horsemen, hoping that he's distracted by that one in the back. Instead, we find just a bunch of uh, longbowmen. We're going to back off because that's just so much damage going from these longbowmen. They've reached the point where horsemen aren't going to do enough against them. Even knights might be a little ineffective. So this is when I need to be getting down a siege workshop. Hopefully right about now. I mean, yeah, the barracks are good. We can get man-at-arms, but really I need to save up some wood and put down a siege workshop. Would love to see that coming out, and I think it's right about now. I have the, I have the wood for it. Oh, looks like I'm putting down more houses, but I think it's right about now. I'm just like, I need the wood. Horseman in the back, always harassing. Until he puts down walls blocking all of this, we're going to go in for the occasional villager kill. We did get a mosque out. We need to start collecting up these uh, relics. We are getting the agriculture upgrade. Maybe a little early for the agriculture upgrade. We don't actually have any farms, but we are going to be making the transition shortly. Fortunately, I've sent these villagers out to a new food source. We're going to take these deer here. And of course, we're going to put an outpost down. On high view, always put an outpost near your uh, resources because just the increased vision is so helpful. So now we're spamming out a whole bunch of Castle Age units and we got our preservation of knowledge. So all of our technologies are cheaper. So you're seeing me really push the uh, blacksmith upgrades, the economic upgrades looking good and I'm upgrading my archers since I have the most of them. I mean I've got a whopping 23 of them right now. I'd love to get them upgraded further. And once again we're sending out some cavalry harassment. English are often weak on the sides, strong up front, so we're gonna send these knights around, we'll send these horsemen around, see what we can get. And we are rallying imams out to grab relics, so that's good. Good, more blacksmith upgrades coming out. Some Spring Alden placements out front, love it. Villager count, I'm up to 72. My opponent does have two town centers. I have no doubt in my mind that they went for the king's palace as their uh, next landmark, and that just acts as another town center. They are probably ahead in food economy, but I think I have them beat in others, yeah pretty even on stone. I'm ahead in gold and wood especially, but he's just so far ahead in food. And here we go on the back side of his uh, wood line again. He's quick to respond though. Look at that. Look how fast he was grabbing those villagers. Though weirdly none of them retreat inside that outpost. That's a little weird. Meanwhile over here we're trying to find anything. Um... Oh and we spot a uh monk running off with a relic. My horseman attack didn't feel very effective, so I'm going to pull them back. And I think I'm going to park them on the relics, because I've realized, oh, my opponent is grabbing relics off the map just like me. So let's uh, start securing them. 
So we'll, we'll park, I mean, when we secure relics, you can go one step and say, oh, I'll get my own monks out on the map and collect up these relics. But another step is park units, high damage units on top of the relics. These three horsemen might not even be enough. Like a monk might be able to grab that relic and do the conversion and end up with a few extra horsemen. He's got his man at arms. Those are scary units for the English. Lots of armor on these things. And now I get a huge preview of his army. It's infantry. I don't need spearmen. I don't need cavalry. This is when I really need to go uh, siege. And this extra gold income from uh, dropping off this relic will be huge. I desperately need to start getting out these mangonels. Love to see myself start mixing them in. Yes, I've already got one. He's just pure infantry. The camel archers might be okay. Crossbowmen are good, but I really need mangonels, springalds. This is gonna turn into a siege game for sure. Send in some knights to do some harassing. Looks like we're getting some villager kills here. Looks like he has the textiles upgrade. His uh, villagers are looking extra tanky. But as long as we can target a few of them down, it'll be a big win. Nice, getting some good kills. And we are securing this sacred site down here. We decided to build stone walls to try and protect ourselves a little bit here. And we, again, we get to see his entire army because he's using all of it to chase my two knights. And we just run. Crossbowmen, lots of longbowmen, and then some more infantry. Now we spot what my opponent's up to. Big keep in the center of the map. We used our ram that we built. This thing's now gonna have three towers to its name. That's three outposts, nice. Now I'm wondering if my forces here can take out this keep. We could send the battering ram in, and we do have a mangonel. I'd like better vision here, so I'm gonna build an outpost here. And I've got a lot of villagers to do it, which is good. Looks like my opponent grabbed the sacred site sent a monk forward to do it over here it looks like he's clearing out my forces probably wants to grab this next relic oh he lost a monk who was grabbing the relic really good move there looks like we prevented another relic going his way i want my mangonel to hit these villagers but we only get a few and then we have to retreat and i lose my scout there he was providing great vision but fortunately this outpost is here now and we're getting out our siege finally we definitely need the trebuchet, we definitely need the mangonel, and we need a spring all. The moment I queue these up, greased axles and the trebuchet, I realize I need so many more uh, siege workshops. So I think over here with these villagers, once they finish up on this deer hunt, I realize, okay, whoa, 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 this is gonna be a big siege game. Here my units are engaging. I need this mangonel to activate. He's bringing spring alls forward, very smart. We're getting some shots, but we're gonna lose it right away. This is a problem. He has so much infantry. We're trying to duke it out, and he's got good upgrades. Wow, those are really good. We're trying to catch up on upgrades. And these knights arrive at a great time. They're dealing good damage to these uh, ranged units. And I put some villagers into this uh, outpost to try and take shots at his units, and now he's kind of backing off. He does have a spring alt. I need a spring alt over here or we won't really be able to uh, engage with him. Fortunately, the trebuchet can immediately get to work on the outpost. Look at that. The moment it finished, we already lobbed a uh, rock at it. I'm glad. Oh, we got another monk. Incredible. Oh, I thought these camel archers didn't do anything, but they did good work. We're up to two relics. Would love to get up to three. Looks like this is the last one out on the map. So currently, I have a sacred site and two relics. My opponent has a sacred site and two relics. Here's the spring alts taking shots at my uh, trebuchet, but we'll scare them off with my units. And I have villagers nearby mining stone, and they can just patch up the trebuchet whenever I need to. And there's the extra siege workshops. Probably the best build I made this game. These will be able to spam out as much uh, siege units as I need, particularly spring alts and uh, mangonels. Oof, good shot there. Oh nice, we put a uh, we put a, a spring alt emplacement up there. Enemies capturing this sacred site, that'll put them ahead. I'm gonna send some of my knights that way. 
these villagers here are going to, uh, I believe, secure this gold mine. And at this point, I have not much food income, but we have a lot of uh, wood and gold. So the siege game will be able to play really well. Got a lot of long distance uh, chopping going on here, which is unfortunate, but we're hoping to fix that later. Here he comes with a huge infantry mass and a lot of spring alds as well. He's wisely targeting my trebuchet, but he doesn't realize that I have spring alds back here. And we've queued up attacks on his spring alds. So there, we trade effectively there. We notice one more spring all back here, so we're going to give it a target. And it looks like his units aren't coming forward. I don't think he has vision back here. Yeah. He realizes that he, he needs vision back here to really engage. Now he's coming forward with his units, but we have mangonels in here. I think it's just one, but it's super effective. Look at that. And now our spring all count is up to three. He's trying to lead my units into his um, keep. But we're already dealing good damage to it with our trebuchet. Nice. Over here, we've found a bunch of villagers. Probably 10 villagers here killed by these two knights. It's so nice to send units the long way around and just see what you can do. Really amazing what those knights were able to accomplish. And now I'm hoping that I can knock down his keep, but he is repairing it. So this trebuchet is going to keep working, and here he comes forward with all of his infantry again. We need these mangonel to keep firing, and now my spring all counts up to five. He needs cavalry. Because he never made a single stables, he doesn't have a way to charge in and destroy these spring alts unless he makes spring alts himself. I sent my bunch of spearmen around to see if they could find a soft spot to attack at and they're just kind of running along the walls, seeing if they can find something. And then I find an overchop here. These are just hardened spearmen. They, they don't do very much, but look at how, oh, when there's just a big mass of them, they're just cutting down villagers. And of course, my knights find more villagers here on the stone. Even if I lose this fight, I'll be able to retreat. In fact, I'll probably have to cancel this key. Yep, I'll be able to retreat rebuild and he'll be down a ton of villagers i'm at almost a hundred while he's actively losing i mean he's probably lost two dozen in the past three minutes just look at them stabbing down these villagers they don't even have good upgrades but they're doing work all it takes is a few cheap units to get a really big score and there you have it with all of these mangonels alive him without any spring holes or one of them limping away, we can pretty much win this game. Opponent taps out. It was a good game. I didn't fall into the trap of engaging with the English in the center of the map nonstop, and I'm really glad I identified that this would be a siege game early. My opponent easily could have made a huge mass of infantry, and I would have never fought against it. And just, if I did, I'd completely lose. It was a great game. Hope to see you for the next one. Catch you next time.